The Ogre Kingdoms have been revealed as the early adopter bonus for Total War Warhammer 3, but before we talk about it and everything that was revealed alongside of it, let's watch the trailer. We'll thunder and feast on any man, any beast, doesn't matter, we'll snack on them all. The stragglers we did consume are trapped in our sacrifice too. They scream and they run, but that's part of the fun, cause the ogres are coming to get ya! They're big, they're fat, they're loud, they're the worst kept secret in Total War. The arrival of the Ogre Kingdoms has been teased for several weeks now, so it's not exactly a surprise to see them coming, but it does confirm at least one more race will be playable at the game's launch. And more importantly, the launch date has finally been announced, February 17th of 2022, which is about a whole month earlier than I honestly expect them to do. That is coming up very quickly. And for people like myself who tend to get early access to these sort of things, generally that comes about a month or a month and a half earlier than release. So that's about the time you can expect your favorite YouTube channels to start releasing videos from it. The other non-Ogre related surprise here is that this game will be releasing on the Windows Store and more specifically, the Xbox Game Pass for PC which is a surface that gives you access to a very large number of games for a nominal fee each month. The details on exactly what games and how much of the DLC will be available through the Xbox Game Pass have not been revealed, but the implication seems to be that it will be the base games of 1, 2, and 3, but not the DLC. Like I said, that's the implication so far though and has not been confirmed. But for many people who are coming into the series much later, you don't want to have to go back and buy two more games to play the combined world map, and this gives people a very easy and accessible way of dipping their toes directly into the waters of game 3, with all the playable races from the first two games already available to them. So expect this announcement to bring in a big wave of new players. But you're here to talk about ogres, so let's talk about the ogres that we saw in this trailer and its accompanying marketing images. Some ogre mercenaries were included in Warhammer 2 as a wandering faction, but it is clear they have been given the old spit shine here with additional units and new mounts and monsters. Here's the ones we know of for sure, but pending an official roster reveal, we can assume that there will be more forthcoming. This gentleman is most likely an ogre butcher. You can tell from his distinctive apron and rather interesting dental work. This is a fire belly, a type of mage that specializes in gut magic and bellowing flames. This is a stone horn, a big, violent, strong, and rock hard animal that personifies every value that an ogre aspires to and thus makes the perfect mount. Atop him is likely an ogre tyrant, or at least an advanced captain unit. The guys with the metal helmets and big shields over their bellies are called iron guts, and the dude just to the left of them holding the big cannon is called a lead belcher. The guy in the background is a giant. You've all seen giants before. It feels like literally every faction in Total War Warhammer, if they are around long enough, will eventually get a giant for their faction. So yeah, ogres get giants too, but at least in this case, the whole people eating thing does seem to actually go together pretty well. Because you see that guy right there? The big guy with the hooks and the cooking pot behind him? Yeah, he eats people. That's his thing. He's also likely a playable legendary lord called Scrag the Slaughterer. The little goblin looking guy sitting behind him is called a Noblar, and it's his job to pick up all the body parts this guy chops off and then throw them in the cauldron that is drugged behind him and attached to his body by a bunch of nipple hooks. Have I mentioned that the ogres are kind of awesome? The Noblars themselves are sort of an ogre support staff, and I expect to see several units of their own to appear in the ogre roster. Because in the lore, it's the Noblars that do all the heavy lifting, quite literally in the case of Greasus Goldtooth, who I, oh man. Okay, that is a fat shirtless 
Pac-Man on a wooden wheelbarrow or possibly a crappy Mario Kart. For comparison, here is his original model. It's supposed to be like Henry VIII on steroids, and you can see the 25 or 30 Knoblars underneath him carrying his fat bulk onto the battlefield wherever it goes. It's awesome. It really illustrates everything about what it means to be the top dog ogre, which means he does nothing all the time except eat and then punch and then be awesome, I guess. He's the fattest and most powerful tyrant in the entire ogre kingdom, sort of like a giant job of the hut. And yet it seems like he probably kicks the wheel of his own wheelbarrow to move and has a knoblar pushing him, I guess? I don't know, I realize this is a weird thing to get hung up on, but it's not like it's beyond the capabilities of CA to implement the other version. Here's a fan-made mod that does exactly that, so I'm really hoping this version of Grease's Goldtooth is maybe his level one form, where before he gets so fat that he breaks the wood underneath him and then requires the Knoblars to carry him afterwards. But at the moment, he reminds me too much of Trade Prince Galwix from World of Warcraft. Expect a lot of memes about this very interesting design choice. The final bit of new information is that there will be physical copies of the game, one with a limited edition steelbook, and both both of them including a map of the campaign that launches with the game. That's right, this is our first look at the map as a bit of goodies that comes with the physical editions. Alright, let's work some Photoshop magic really quick. Enhance, enhance, and enhance. Great, now let's actually talk about what we can see. It took me a full 30 minutes to wrap my head around this map, and the easiest way to explain it to you is actually to show you a video where I've taken a map of the Warhammer world and put it onto a 3D globe. But basically, we're looking down on top of the world almost from the North Pole. To help you get your eye in, I'm going to point to you the same positions on both the Mortal Empires map and this new Warhammer 3 map. And by the way, I believe this to be the full and complete map. It's possible it goes a little further to the left and includes Britonia, but if it does, that's awesome and I'm glad to be wrong because I love me some Britonia. These are the Dragon Isles. That's Altdorf. This is Kislev, and if it helps, think about it as the old world, except all of southern Europe has been cut off. And I'm going to leave this up there for a second for you to get your minds around it before we cut back to the main map. And yes, that is my teacher voice. So if you have any questions, make sure to raise your hand first. Okay, and here we have an obnoxiously large arrow to point out things with. Uh, you'll notice down the bottom left-hand corner, the reason I know all this is it has the names. This is Nordland. This is Middenland, and that is the Wasteland, which you can see even from the original Warhammer 1 map means this is the Empire. I filled in Ostland, Hockland, and Talbachland because that should be roughly where they fall. Up to the north, in this little gap in between, you'll see Northern and Southern Oblast, which is the Kislev area until we reach the World's Edge Mountains right here. Um, yet again, Dragon Isles, because this is Haunted Forest, and that's sort of where it relatively goes. But roughly this area, is what is now going to be called the Darklands, areas of the Chaos Dwarves and things like that. Over on the far top right is Grand Cathay. And this is Grand Cathay, and you'll notice specifically it says the Celestial Riverlands is why we know that. And up at the very top, completely changing any map ever created in Warhammer Fantasy, instead of being solid, we now see the Chaos Wastes are four individual little kingdoms that are giant islands floating in the middle of the North Sea. So it's a very different take on the Warhammer world. And something you'll notice right here is how much of this is impassable terrain. All of these tiny little threads right here are the only ways through these mountains. So this is huge mountainous barriers separating each of these major provinces here. So it is going to very much impact the play of the game map. And these gates and the passes can be much more defensible and make for some very interesting battles to say the least. When people were predicting what the game map for Game 3's campaign would look like, I don't think anyone predicted this top-down view, but it's very interesting and has some very interesting possibilities for play, and will be very different from the eventual combined Immortal Empires campaign map, but more on that when it releases. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope to bring you more news about Total War as it releases. So subscribe to be notified about new content, or join the Patreon and help in its creation. In our ears, but the more we waste the sound of its tone.
will thunder and feast on any man, any beast. Doesn't matter, we'll snack on them all. The stragglers we did consume are dropped in our sacrifice too. They scream and they run, but that's part of the fun. Cause the ogres are coming to get ya! Thank you.